We have been having a lot of fun on Live It Up today. One of our guests had a birthday. There's so much going on. And you know my background. I love singing. Thank you to Futures of America. And with us now, our next guest, what a voice, Luciana Lemon Narca. And he is here with us. He's been in the United States since 2008. And we might get to hear him sing. Welcome. How are you? Very well, Donna. Thank you very much for having me here. Now, you've played at some big venues here in America. Yes. Lincoln Center. Where have you, where have you performed? Well, I've been uh, able and being honored to perform at Lincoln Center, at Carnegie Hall, at Madison Square Garden, at the General Assembly of the United Nations, in cities like Boston, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Europe, Africa. I'm missing only Asia in this moment. <laughs> only there. But that'll yes. be next. Next year you can go. Well, we're right? really working on it, yes. Oh, definitely. that's wonderful. At what age did you know that you had this gift? How was your gift discovered? Uh, it has a date and a time. It was the 1996 at 7 at 5:58 p.m. It was the 25th anniversary of my parents, and uh, the DJ put us a song called "Un Amore Così Grande," performed by one of the most important tenor of the Second World War, Mario Del Monaco. It was it. I was eating. I remember I was eating my cake. I just left, and I dedicated all my attention to this song. And in that moment, I decided I want to be a tenor. Magical, absolutely magical. Yes. And when you decided, it's a good thing that your vocal cords um, complied, like they agreed with you. Like you could, you can have a dream to become a wonderful singer, but you also have to have a lot of um, natural talent and also physicality, right? You have to be able. It to... It is correct. Mostly, okay. also, you have to be dedicated to the music. And I was already playing uh, clarinet in the conservatory. But I did never develop that interest through towards the the voice or opera, and of course you have to have audition through with some uh, vocal teacher and figure out if you will be a good singer uh, to start an important career. And I did, and thanks God. My name Luciano sometimes can can be heavy because of course before me there was the probably the most important tenor of any kind of generation. So, but yes. And are you, you and you're a fan of his? Have you ever met him? No, I've been okay. working with Placio Domingo. I yes. never met. Oh, I wonderful. never met uh, Master Luciano Pavarotti. I would have loved to, but uh, definitely, I believe it's uh, his voice will stay for legacy. Yes, and the other gentleman you just mentioned, Placio. Uh, yes, Placio so, Domingo. Yeah. So tell us, how did you get to meet him? I was in Rome in 2000, and I was working in a small project, vocally speaking, on the Theatre of the Opera of Rome. That was the first time I met Maestro Placio Domingo, and uh, he was performing the main, the main, the main part. I had a very, very, very small part, but that was enough for me to spend two months with this outstanding man and uh, to see the way he was carrying on. He's one, first of all, he's a wonderful person and uh, approachable, and uh, he doesn't stop. He invented the famous quote, if I rest, I rust. Ah, if That you says rest, a lot about the Maestro rust. Casio Domingo. Except yes. in singing, you know, when they have the big Z, right, is a four beat rest. Yes, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the only rest you can have, right? You're correct. <laughs> Um, so you had a wonderful journey. You came to America in 2008. Your career has flourished here. People just absolutely love you. You have such a following. Tell us about your first album. Uh, tell us about that. My first album, uh, it was launched in 2009. As soon as I came in the States of America in 2008, I thought that I would have paid an homage to my mother who passed away in 2005 for cancer. And uh, that was my concert at Lincoln Center where I deeply wanted to do an album. And the album was called Mama, which Call and has within the, the, the CD the most famous song dedicated to the, to the mothers called Mama. And uh, that was an important step for me because not only I launched a CD in Lincoln Center, but also because I thought that I connected to my mom, although I think I connect throughout every day of my life. That was a special moment. And then after that, I've been able to create in 2013 another album called The Impossible Dream which I did in uh, conjunction with the New York Choral Society. We did also for a benefit cause, and it was an outstanding compilation of some Italian, English, and American songs for all the tastes. And we were in the green room, and we were singing that, you know, to dream the impossible dream. Yes. Um, and you said I had a nice voice, which really made me feel good, because I've never been formally trained, uh, but I did have a lot of fun singing in the singing group that I belonged to, and we would sing that song quite often. So being an entertainer, what's most important to you? It's not just about singing, but how do you bring your gift to the audience? No, it's not about singing only. It's about giving voice also to those whose voice is not heard. And this is my motto, actually. Uh, the motto who became part of my life because my first concert in this country has been in, in, in the United Nations when we were promoting the, the, the agenda of the UN and we realized how much 
we need to raise our voices to let those minority groups to be heard. And then when we started to be involved in many other charitable, uh, charitable causes or uh, events, and I taught myself to give part of everything I do in my career for benefits. And then I'm, uh, my uh, nickname, as, uh, the Goodwill Tenor, has the come The Goodwill up. Tenor, exactly. Yes. You are known as the Goodwill Tenor. This, they've been <laughs> <laughs> appointed me as, a, as a, the Goodwill Tenor. I like it because it's innocent terms, but also express very well what I really think about voices. I think many singers and arts in general, do artists, they do this. Just to officially announce that you do this because it's part of your life. It's part for me to give back to God and thank Him for every blessing he gives every day. A hundred percent. In fact, I was honored this year because they invited me to go to the uh, International Day of Happiness at the United Nations. Yes. And it was such an honor and so much fun. And we had these great um, stuffed globes that we were passing around and everything. Um, it was fabulous. And I know you offered to sing a little for us today. Would you do yes, that? Yes, I will definitely okay. do what that. What will you be performing with us? Well, I would like to, since we are performing a cappella, I would like to sing a very uh, short piece of a Neapolitan song called Santa Lucia. Beautiful. And after beautiful. you perform that, we're going to talk about Padre Pio. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Let's hear. Okay. Sul mare luccica l'astro d'argento Placida e l'onda, prospero il vento. Sul mare luccica l'astro d'argento. Placida e l'onda, prospero il vento. Venite all'agile. Barchetta mia, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. <laughs> Bravo. Mm, thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful, thank beautiful. You. Thank you so much. Thank what you. a gift. Wow, and you breathe properly, you know, the whole diaphragm. Well, yes, also, <laughs> also when you are seated, you have to be sure that you, you breathe enough and you, give, uh, you expand the diaphragm very well. If you are standing, it's a little bit easier than you are seated, but beautiful. that's why you train for that. <laughs> beautiful, thank you so much. And thank you. Lord. How are you invo involved in the Padre Pio Foundation? The same Pio Foundation, it was uh, almost an inspiration. There are many things that happen, especially when you, when you believe there is, there is God, there is faith that gives you some things during your life. So in 2013, I supported many events on the 45th anniversary commemoration of Padre Pio's passing through the United States of America. And in that specific case, I saw that there, are, there was a big devotion about Padre Pio, many Padre Pio peer group and association. But I had an experience through the United Nations and other uh, important charitable organization about bringing legacy of anything by raising funds and supporting charitable causes. So I saw that this was missing. I came from that part of the country. I am from Puglia region. I used to go in San Giovanni Rotondo in Pietrocina once per year. Padre Pio was my saint. And so when I, when I was approached by all these uh, it, mostly Italian-American organization, I thought it was the case to do some things more. God bless me, and I had wonderful opportunity of working and uh, uh, being in contact with uh, outstanding uh, persons, and mostly uh, uh, Joe Mantegna, who has been my mentor and uh, fall, um, has been helped me in understanding better how to um, develop my 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 career and my humanity here in this country. And then I met Robert Davi, who is uh, beside being yes. be, beside being 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 a friend. He's been blessed and being miracled by Padre Pio and he said that in camera many times so I thought that we could ask those who have a voice to support the San Pio Foundation besides bishops and cardinals well definitely a Catholic foundation so in 2014 I took the lead and I thought okay this is the, it comes the moment to create the San Pio Foundation and we created this national foundation we we are on the second year we just did our past uh, award ceremony in Bridgeport this past Saturday 
and uh, we are already active in five states and we are prob probably, if not the most, one of the most prominent foundations dedicated to Padre Pio. It's a beautiful foundation, a beautiful organization. You have a lot of celebrities, a lot of community support. I, I think it's wonderful that you're doing that. I have a lot of friends that are, um, like you said, have had miraculous healings and all different types of things for them, for their skin and for other things. So yes, exactly. thank you and bless you for doing that. It's really, really lovely that you're doing that. So, Thank and to you. find out more, how could people uh, learn about you? Do you have a website for yes, yourself? Yes, they, they can go, if they want to, to know more about the St. Pio Foundation, they can go to www.stpofoundation.org. Okay. If they want to learn more about my activities as a singer, they can go to www.lucianolamonarca.com. Excellent. And so, um, as the cameras are fading, I want you to sing a little bit of Impossible Dream. We could sing it softly. Okay, thanks for watching Live It Up. Luciana and I are going to go sing now. Okay, so it starts. <clears throat> this is the quest to, to follow, follow the star. star. No, no matter, matter how hopeless, no matter how far.